agreeableness is overrated. Do you agree? Hello, this is Stephanie Michelle and welcome back. Today we're talking about agreeableness. So let's first define what is that? <laughs> Being agreeable, you may have heard of it in personality tests. It is the tendency to go along with what other people agree with or to say things, do things that don't make a ruckus, that are agreeable. This can be synonymous with people pleasing. It can come naturally. It can be a construct, something that's put on. Uh, that's really up for you to decide. Some people are more naturally agreeable than others. And I came across someone talking about <laughs> this idea that to be successful, you need to agree with what everyone says and then do your own thing anyway. Okay, how do you feel about that? I think it's total BS. <laughs> if you can tell where I fall on the agreeable spectrum. Going ahead and agreeing with people just so that they feel good about you agreeing with them and then doing something else or actually feeling something else is out of integrity. That's manipulation. Some people do this intentionally. Other people do this unintentionally. Maybe it's less conscious, but it's something they've grown up doing their whole lives. So I'd like us to just take a moment to think about this idea of, oh, to get ahead, you need to be likable. So just agree with everyone no matter what. I'd even go on to say a part of finding not only your authenticity, but true connection with other people is rooted in not being agreeable, at least not all the time. Sure, there's compromise. Sure, there are instances where viewpoints will align. Viewpoints will be different. But it's a matter of feeling like there is the emotional safety to express what that true sentiment is, and beyond that, to have done the inner work, to know, what do I think? How do I feel? And I do believe that this tactic, this very popular tactic of agreeing with everyone, no matter what, is bypassing personal growth. That is a short-term game. It's a short-term game to focus purely on, okay, I'll just get them to like me and say the thing, do the thing, but then have this ulterior motive? No, no. The long-term game is knowing what you stand for and sure, having passion for it, but also being rooted and grounded in the fact that your beliefs are not you. So if someone disagrees with you, they are not disagreeing with you and all that you stand for. They are disagreeing with a thought, an opinion that you hold as your own, that you have adopted, and you can choose to change your mind at any time. That can seem destabilizing to some people. Wait a second, but my beliefs define me. They make up who I am. My community of friends all feel and think the same things. What would I be without them? What would I do if we didn't have those things in common? Well, you get to dig a little deeper. The idea here is to be disagreeable as much as it is authentic because you're not even focused on your agreeability. You're not even focused on saying things because of the anticipated reaction or response. Although you, in conscientiousness, you do consider what it is, but it does not dictate what you do. And when you say the thing, do the thing, there's regard for other people, but there is also regard for yourself and for what's true for you. <laughs> Let this be an invitation. What is something that has been on your mind that you have wanted to say, but maybe never have because of some sort of fear? And again, that fear may be rational, may be irrational. The ultimate fear that many people have in speaking their truth is being ostracized. People with this viewpoint oftentimes believe that if they were, sometimes to even allow themselves to think differently, that it would be too much, that it would not be enough. One of the two, right? So sometimes people trade in their truth for connection, but let's redefine connection. Is that really connection? If what you're trading is your own connection to those visceral 
feelings, those emotional feelings, those wondrous, ponderous thoughts that pop into your head and maybe linger there a little while. There is certainly a way to do this with tact. However, by nature, choosing to not go down this path of being agreeable no matter what, no matter how you package it, <laughs> if someone wants a yes and they're getting anything other than that, then you just might not be for them. But again, is it true that you're not for them? Because we are not our opinions. Sometimes we cling so much to them. Having a lighter hearted approach, doing the thinking, doing the feeling and being led by that with consideration for others, knowing that it's subject to change, holding it loosely, encouraging other people to say what they think and say what they feel. What would the world be like if social connection wasn't so dependent upon being in an insulated bubble? I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this because we could go on. There's, there's a lot more to unearth, but we'll just have this be the beginning of a conversation about being agreeable and why it can benefit not only us, but those around us to say what we think, say what we feel once we know what that even is. Until next time.